So far we've talked about how to describe motion in terms of position and time giving us velocity and acceleration. Those are quantities that we use to characterize and describe motion. Now I'd like to actually get into some physics and talk about where motion comes from, what influences motion, what determines the motion of an object. I'm going to do this from a philosophical and historical perspective, how it used to be believed that it happens, and then move up to a more modern view. So what I'd like you to get out of this lesson is to relate force and motion, specifically how uniform motion and zero net force are related, and then also to be able to relate force, acceleration, and mass. Acceleration we've talked about before, mass not so much, and force not at all. In today's lesson, we're going to introduce the concept of force, what it means, what it does. The point of this is that motion is one of the more central topics to physics. We'd also like to understand motion rather than just be able to describe it. We'd like to understand how things move, why things move, what determines the way they move. So for that, I need to introduce the concept of force because force is intimately related to motion. Force has a direction. We'll talk more about directed quantities in a few lessons, um, but for right now, we can say that force, like acceleration, like velocity, has a direction to it. Forces just as position and velocity, can add together as well. So what we call the net force on an object, we have a single object with perhaps many forces acting on it. If we add all those forces together, the net force is the sum of all those forces. So first I'd like you to think and answer, what happens to an object that has zero net force acting on it? And I'd like to describe the ancient view of motion. The ancients believed that there were four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. All objects that were on earth that we could encounter that made of these four elements would seek their natural state. The natural state of earth and water is down toward the center of the earth. All things, if you release them, will drop down toward the center of the Earth. They might get stopped when they run into something like the ground, but that's their natural tendency, is to seek their natural down state. Air and fire would tend to go up. And that was the understanding of the natural motion if you allow something to do what it wants to do. And then, if you're going to change that, what they called violent motion would disrupt this natural tendency. I can take a rock and throw it upwards. That's a violent motion that's opposing its natural tendency to come back down. Once I've ceased that violent motion, the rock's natural tendency will then start to pull it back down. And this was maintained by all the ancient thinkers, most particularly Aristotle who codified it and then was accepted for many, many hundreds of years. Later on, however, additional thinkers challenged this, including Galileo and Isaac Newton, finally codified Galileo's law of inertial motion. An object's state of motion does not change unless an outside force acts upon it. If the object is at rest, without any outside force acting on it, it just remains at rest. If it's already moving, it continues moving in a straight line at a constant speed, as long as there is no external force acting upon it. This is quite contrary to the idea of natural states and violent motion. But does it make sense? Why did Newton propose this if this is contrary to what we naturally think? Well, a degree of experimental evidence had supported the idea that this was in fact the case. So I want you to think about it. You have access to examples of motion that the ancients didn't really. You've been able to sit in a car traveling at a fairly high speed along a straight level road. The ancients really didn't have that opportunity. They'd have to run or ride a horse or something like that, and they definitely feel some forces, definitely feel some effort going on. But if you're just sitting in a car, or cruising in a plane, or in a train, as long as it's moving in a straight line at a constant speed, do you feel that force? Or does it feel just like you're sitting still? I think you'll recognize that it feels just like you're sitting still if you're sitting in a plane that's hurtling through the sky at 600 miles an hour. It feels like you're just sitting in your own chair. You're not feeling any force pushing you forward. And here's a thought experiment that we can trace back to Galileo. 
if somehow we were to contrive a way to seal you in a box so you couldn't see outside and then either leave it sitting still or to move it at a constant velocity, a straight line at a constant speed, would there be anything inside the box you could do to tell the difference? Is there any experiment you could do, any measurement you could make that could tell the difference between sitting still and moving at a constant velocity? Galileo's answer was no, and modern physics's answer is no as well. This is a very useful rule, it turns out, despite its simplicity. One nice thing about it is that the rule goes both ways. Not only is it the case that if there is no external force, there is no acceleration, because that's what that's saying. The velocity doesn't change. That means zero acceleration. And it goes both ways. Zero acceleration also means there must be zero net force. Using it that way, we call the equilibrium rule. If there is a constant velocity, zero acceleration, then there is zero net force, from that, if we know that an object is in mechanical equilibrium, traveling at a constant velocity, then we know that all the forces add to zero. This enables us to find missing forces, perhaps. If we know some of the forces, but not all, we know how they add up, and then by subtraction can figure out what the unknown forces are. What Newton's first law has done for us is remove the distinction between motion and non-motion. A constant velocity motion is nothing different, really, conceptually, than zero velocity motion. So zero velocity is just a special case of all velocities. It's just one specific case. There are a whole infinity of possible constant velocities, and being at rest is just one of them. That's Newton's first law.